top of the morning to you. Actually, it's actually afternoon, very afternoon. I'm going to show you here. I promised to show this one time, and I didn't do very good a job of keeping my promise. And one of the people that emails me said, Hey, you didn't keep your damn promise. <laughs> so we'll keep our promise, which works out. This is a uh, Kind of an electrochemical rust removal system. There's been about a hundred instructional things done on the internet. I'm sure YouTube has a couple hundred of these. Um, I don't know. Mine's no different. What you're gonna need is a, a bucket and some water, and you need some. Uh, you need some uh, washing soda. Don't use baking soda, it's not going to work. All you got to do is go to the store, and over by the uh, laundry stuff, It's they've got wa washing soda. And you add a little bit. To be real honest, I never measure it, I just throw it in there. And the other thing you need is the tool that you're going to remove the rust on. This one's, you can see here I've sanded on this a little bit, but we're going to do that. And I'm going to use a car battery. Well, technically, it's a tool volt battery. My suggestion is that you uh, try really hard not to use a battery charger because it'll get water on it somehow, and it'll get splashed up there, and somebody will burst into flames, and then you'll be mad, and you'll know, try and sue me. And let me tell you, I don't have any damn money, so you're not going to get a lot unless you want my cat. Um, you also need a piece of steel to act as one of the electrodes in this process. Um, I don't know. You can use about anything. Don't use something with, uh, excuse me, don't use stainless steel. Um, the elect electrolysis process uh, can cause a gas to form off of that and some bad cooties can happen. Um, anyway, what you need to do is make an electrical connection. I'm using this piece of steel, which happens to be some sort of a crappy little meat cleaver that I was going to throw away. It has now become an invaluable tool in my industrial complex. <laughs> so there, that makes a couple people happy. The other other gentleman said that I never told enough jokes on YouTube. Well, there's a joke for you. This is real basic. You hook the car battery up, you hook the positive of the car battery. You can use a little motorcycle battery. You can use any kind of battery. Um, you could use a handful of D cells if you want. Be a little expensive on your pocketbook. I would strongly suggest not using a power supply that you plug into the wall just for safety reasons. You can do it. But uh, again, don't come crying to me when you burst into flames for some reason. Oh, you need the tool that you're going to try and de-rust, and the negative of that goes on there. And away we go. Now keep in mind that this is kind of a line of sight process. And also keep in mind, don't let the two touch in there, or you'll have a hell of a mess. Um, if you want to be safe, you may want to, in your leads, you may want to put a fuse. You can buy an inline fuse at the car parts store. And, I don't know, you could put about a 5 or 10 amp fuse in there. That way if they touch, it'll just blow the fuse. That would be a little safer. Um, oh, it's already starting to go. This actually happens pretty quick. Excuse my bad camera work, I don't have a dolly here. And see that along the edge there already? That's it doing its thing. Now keep in mind that whatever you use as one of the electrodes, one of them is kind of sacrificial. This piece of junk over here is sacrificial. Will turn into a big greasy mess and you'll, you'll never be able to use it again for anything useful. A lot of guys go, and go up to the home center and buy pieces of rebar. You can do that. Um,
that works okay. You could use pieces of steel. I've used change before. You can have multiple electrodes too. Um, you want things could you could do is uh, you could center this piece and then put multiple electrodes around the outside. You could wrap a piece of sheet steel around there too. Um, but what'll happen is it'll uh, work on this side and not on the other side so much. And basically, you can do this in anything that'll hold water. Bucket works good. You could use an old discarded fish tank. You could use a big giant storage box or a tote. Uh, I seen a guy <laughs> one time. He built up a a ring of cinder blocks around a car trailer, and he lined the trailer. He lined the cinder blocks. Um, as a frame, he lined it with a sheet plastic and then threw a, a car trailer in there and then had multiple electrodes everywhere. It actually did a pretty good job. You have multiple batteries too. It's kind of clever. So you can make this as big or as small as you want. You can put multiple batteries in the series. Um, it does speed up the process, but it's a little hard on stuff. I would suggest just one car battery is more than enough. Uh, keep in mind that you know, you're working with 12 volts at pretty much an unlimited current there, so if you screw up, you might regret it or you might have a, a nice burn. So be careful a little bit here. If you can see that or not, the bubbles are bubbling. Yeah, it's already starting to eat into that. Uh, you do need a good electrical connection, so if this is just a total bucket of rust, you may have to get a wire wheel or a wire brush or some sandpaper and scrape off a place to uh, make a place to hook your electro your clamp to. Also keep in mind that if your wire dips down into the uh, into the bucket it'll probably dissolve it. Um, this really isn't a, a dangerous process per se. All it is is water and baking oh excuse me washing soda. Uh, make sure you dispose of it properly, although it's probably not really very caustic. I think, I don't know, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say you might be able just to pour this onto your driveway. It won't hurt anything. It'll just dry up. If you are brave and violate the rules that I've told you and do use a, uh, a power supply, um, you can, you know, if you use a variable one with a current meter, you can adjust it and see how much current is going into the thing. Like anything, um, you know, good things come to those who wait. So the slower you go, probably the better it'll work. If you get too aggressive, it might cause some pitting. You're not really getting rid of the, uh, you know, you're not really putting any metal back. So any pitting that's happened isn't going to disappear. You're just converting the rust and getting rid of it. One advantage this has over some of the rust removal systems is, uh, you know, some of the chemical ones, uh, you better don some gloves. My suggestion is that you fiddle around and try some different rust removal systems. <clears throat> yeah, I don't know if you can see that or not. It's uh, kind of getting a green tinge to it. That's the, uh, there's some kind of crud comes off of the uh, positive electrode. It's kind of oily globules. Um, I did experiment one time with using carbon rods, and there's a, there's a scum little form on the top. Matter of fact, you can see it right there starting. Um, I used some graphite or carbon electrodes one time, and I don't know where I got them from. Uh, they might have came out of some old dry cell batteries. And that actually worked pretty good. It didn't seem to get that scum so much. And uh, that worked pretty good. I don't know if you can see this or not. Now granted, that water was, you know, I just got that out of the faucet. And it already looks like hell. I'm not sure how many times you can do this before you need to change the water. I just... I've just been doing it for years and you just kind of get a feel for it.
you know, this might be a good time to go get your radio and sit down and get a book. I, I don't know if I leave this. I've, I'll be honest, I've left this unattended and never had anything bad happen. Um, but like anything, you know, you make sure the kids aren't around or the dog or, you know, unaware life partners, I guess, whatever, you know. I don't know. Just make sure that nobody's going to get hurt. Nobody or nothing is going to get hurt. Like I said, uh, like I mentioned before, I would get a fuse and put in this. That would be a good safety thing to do. And don't forget to don't forget to charge the battery. The other thing you might do is you might get a uh, oh, oh, we get one out. You might get a little cheap voltmeter and uh, watch the charge on the on the. Uh, well, I can watch the charge on this one. I want it as long as it does. Click in there. There we go. Let's try that again. You could get a little cheapy voltmeter, and uh, it's on the edge there. And uh, you could watch the charge on the battery. You know, eventually when it gets down to about a little bit dip below 12 volts, you probably need to stop and recharge it. Don't. Don't let this run unattended overnight. You'll run the battery down and damage it. There's nothing to stop you from putting, you know, a big wire wound resistor in series with this to kind of limit the current. That might be a good thing to have too. You can you can read. I'm not your mom. You can read about these on the internet. I'm just showing you that this works. There you can see right about there where the water has been. And uh, you can see it's eaten to it. The other thing you might do is you might degrease whatever you're doing. If there's any oils or greases on there, they'll kind of slow that process down. Man, that is really gucking that water up. If you can see those little little lumps of gunk floating around there. Yuck. The thing you're going to need to do is uh, when this, don't let this, um, don't let the electrical charge run down or stop while that's in the water. If you do, the rust will come back with the engines. Um, I would say, you know what I really, you know what I do? I, I go get a kitchen timer and set a timer and watch this about once every hour. Well, other than that, there's not a terrible lot to see here. This works on different things. Like I said, just don't use chrome. Um, you can experiment a little bit. Uh, it doesn't work so well on things that don't rust. And after you get done, you know, yank it out of the water, and I would definitely wipe it down really good. Uh, what I do is I wipe it down with mineral spirits or alcohol or something to dry it, to get the moisture out of there, and then wipe it down with some, you know, oil or WD-40 or some sort of lubricant to protect it. You can see on the... Uh, doesn't take long. If you get this all hooked up and you don't see these bubbles within five minutes, there's something wrong. There you can see that gunk that's forming on that other anode. Or as far as me, electrode. It's really going to town. Okie dokie. Well, if you have a question or comment, feel free to leave them. I'm not sure. Uh, <laughs> not sure why the gentleman decided to to needle me about. Hey, you didn't show this to me when there are there are hundreds of these videos. It's not an uncommon process. That's okay.
I don't know, trust your car to the man who wears a star, which we're not working with cars and I don't have any star on me. And I know it's another bad joke. Like I said, one of the one of my patrons, subscribers, watchers of my videos was giving me a rash and a a lot of noise because I don't make enough jokes. <laughs> he didn't say I had to be good jokes. <laughs> Take her easy. Have a good day. Well, I'm back with my electrolysis. Uh, I don't know, demo. Um, you can see that my electrode is just getting gross. Now that water is nice and clean. It definitely was not nice or clean when I threw it away. Set that back in there. And hook that up. Now, what I've done here is I've done absolutely nothing about adding any... Uh, Adding any washing soda. I don't know if you can see this or not. It doesn't look like there's a hell of a lot of anything going on there. We'll wait uh, about a minute. Kind of this oily. Gunk. Coming off my uh, positive electrode there. Let's add a little bit of the magic elixir. Which is washing soda. <laughs> there we go. Well, looks like it's starting to. Definitely starting to cloud up the water. Yeah, it's starting to do its thing there. You can see that or not. There's a lot of bubbles starting to form on the negative side there. See those, and the water is definitely starting to cloud up. <clears throat> it's kind of a weird, if you can see that or not, down by the edge of the handle there is kind of a weird green trail forming off of the uh, positive. Especially along that edge there. It's real faint, but I can see it here. It's really eerie. Well, I'm going to shut you off here. If you have any questions or comments about this, feel free to let me know. Take her easy.